Hello, everybody. This is James M. Prague. Welcome to Soul Care. Uh, we are ending the end. Welcome to the end of the October, uh, Halloween. So uh, it's an interesting time we're living. And at the end of Halloween, uh, we have a moon, full moon on Halloween in Taurus, an intense moon. So you have Scorpio, which is in the sun right now, meeting up with Taurus moon, which is very intense. So Halloween and right around Halloween, of course, the first week of election will be very intense. Without even happening in the election, it's going to be intense astrologically. So hold on, hold on to yourself, ground yourselves, very, very important. I hope you guys have been great for the past week. I've been busy. I'm going to look at your comments here. Hello, hello, everybody. Hello, Heather. Hello, Diana, Lori, Michelle, Louise, Mary, Deborah. People coming from all over. And a lot of new people. Thank you. And a lot of new people were there on Friday night for these uh, mediumship messages. And they were, I thought, an incredible evening. I thought it was an incredible evening. The intention we had at the very beginning was to uh, change lives. And I think we did. I think we did. I think we definitely changed lives. Uh, open people up to exploring, to understand, to looking more into this and to change their perspective, perhaps, to read more, research more. So that would work. Hello from Scotland. Hello, Anthony's. Hello from Germany, Tanya. Hello, Marilyn Brennan. Hello from Cat Sammy. Hello. <laughs> Great. Uh, this puts us on YouTube. It's also on YouTube simultaneously with uh, simultaneously broadcasting on YouTube with my channel. And I'm in the midst of preparing Starseed. Uh, we have three in the can, so we're putting those up. You've already seen the one balance. Well, we're working on some more, so stay, stay tuned because we have some more stuff going on. And then there's another TV, well, there's another show coming up, too, that I'll be involved in. I'll say about that later on. Um, but today I wanted to tell you, um, we're coming for the end of, November 3rd will be the end of registration for the uh, Writer's Workshop. My Writer's Workshop, where I work with you uh, individually and a group to go through uh, any book ideas you might have, poetry, we want to get it published and how to get a book published, how to write an outline, uh, how to get a title. Uh, so I give a whole class about that. It's the most successful class we've ever done. I'm off the third time. And these two books over here, I was just received last week from two writers from my class. This is from Jay Tumor. Jay Tumor. And she wrote last year uh, this book. And she had a stroke. And she thought it was like to have a stroke. And she's, it's interesting because she's also a medical physician. Okay. And the other one is a great book that I wrote in my course named Lynn Random. And it's a great book. The business side of a spiritual practice that everybody is supposed to need. So those are two books that are dedicated to me for the writing class. So we really have a nice community of writers. It's not just me, it's just really writing a book. It's getting it done professionally because I've had many books done for 14 and over 50 years now. So I know a little thing about publishing books. So please join me if you feel so, uh, uh, if you resonate to that, you feel pulled toward it, please go to my website or actually right here at James Lewis Clark. There it is right there. Uh, the writer was in. It'll be closing in November. We'll see November from next week right now because we have to get things started. Okay. And I'll answer questions today and then we'll go on to different topics. I have a question. So we'll do that. And general questions that will help everybody, not specific ones like how is my aunt I guess it's fine. But this is just the general question. Okay. Larson Bay, Alaska. Yay. Okay. I know. Putting animals to sleep is the hardest thing. I know children and animals. I don't know what I'll do when mine, mine has to go home. I think I might go home with it. Read the Rainbow Bridge. It's a very good book for lots of animals. The Rainbow Bridge is the book, the, the poem to read about, about that. And it's very true. And uh, a friend of mine wrote that. The Rainbow Bridge is that. Hello, from, hello, Julie from the UK. How are you, sweetheart? So uh, there's a lot of worry here. So we don't want worry. I don't know COVID yet. If you're getting a bunch of people just asking me. Hi from Toronto. Hello. So good morning, James. Lovely. You just make crazy. Sound is not great. Okay. Sound is not great. Let's see if you can increase the sound. Okay. My sound is great. Can everybody hear me? Pretty me is great. Renee, can you hear me? Yeah. Okay. Hello from Australia. Sending you. Thank you. Put your hands up, your thumbs up, if it's okay, sound wise, to make sure you're having a good experience. Hello from Spain. I've been thinking a lot about Spain. Thank you. I miss Spain. I used to go there a lot. I miss it. I miss people. I just watched these Spanish movies. I miss it so much. I love Spain. I'm from Spain originally, way back in the centuries past. I have Spanish blood. 
The sound is muffled at times. Oh, okay. Does that sound any better? I hope so. Yes, we can hear you. Okay, yes. Hi from Melbourne. Hello. So there are a lot of worries. Um, people have a lot of worries, a lot of um, worry. Worry, I guess the word is worry. So I see questions here. People are concerned about the COVID and they're concerned about their kids and they're concerned about that. And um, hi, James. You know, worried about my son here. Please go so fast. Focus on the full color health. Very good. A friend of mine told me last week, which I really love this, and she said, everybody's having a lot of hard times with this COVID and changes that are happening, transformational changes. And it seems like everybody's depressed. And, depressed. and it is. It's a very tough time because if everybody is depressed in a way. You only be locked up so long. And it's hard when there's not being any guidance really given to the country. So I, I think that you got to look, look upon yourself to get you through this. And, and the way I've been getting through this, and I hope it'll help you, is when I feel I'm down and when I feel there are things that I'm worried about, I turn that worry into gratitude. And then I make a gratitude list. What am I gratitude? What are grateful? What grateful is for? What am I gratitude? What, what are you know, what am I grateful for? What do I have gratitude for in my life? My life is very blessed in many ways that people aren't. So put them to a positive and make a list of about five to ten items that you're grateful for. Because when you focus on the positive, the negative can go away. Um, yesterday has already happened, tomorrow is yet to be. So all you can live is the now, right now. But a gratitude list, when you're feeling down, you're feeling worried, um, and you're feeling out of control, make a gratitude list, okay? Well, and the other list I like to make is uh, your soul, points of your soul, I call points of your soul, and it's the great aspects of your soul that you have. Let's say compassion, understanding, patience, whatever it might be, make a point list, a soul point, 10, 10 points of your soul, 10 points of gratitude. They really help, and keep them where you can see them. Um, so we have to in the moment and get the best of that moment. So as I sit here, I'm really happy that I'm speaking to everybody, that we can share this space together. And we have a voice to speak. We, have, we can go all over the world and share these thoughts with each other and you know, learn from each other. I'm going to share all of your stuff here. Okay. Elizabeth starts every day with three things I'm grateful for. Good. Start of the day. It sets the tempo for the day. Exactly it does. That's right. I do a mantra called healthy am I, happy am I, holy am I. That's my mantra I do every morning uh, in the shower, after I'm doing my physical body, I work in the energetic body, and then I sit every night and brush my teeth. Healthy am I, happy am I, holy am I. And it sets a certain vibration. Um, it'll set a certain tone. And like attracts like, so you'll attract those on a higher level. Okay. Lately, I've been shoveling a lot, and I love being in the beautiful snow. I find shoveling snow, and I had many years of shoveling snow, it's very meditative, actually. It's very meditative. Also, laundry, doing laundry is meditative. Maybe Spatilla, the medium in England, taught me that. And we went through a whole process of meditation with washing clothes and ironing them. So it can be. It's, it's focused awareness, really. So it's whatever you do that you're focused on fully. That's really a meditative uh, uh, thing to do. There. It's a very meditative moment. Meditative moment or something for that. Oh, good. Um, let's, I'm going so fast. I'm grabbing some of these out here. So love from South Africa. Thank you. No, I've never been to South Africa. I've been asked to go three times, but I never went. I didn't want to go to the, the long plane ride. Yeah, Australia was enough for me. Love from Ireland. Oh, thank you, darling. Nikki. Thanks, Nikki. Hello, Queens. <laughs> Hi, Virginia. Hi, Ellen Lewis. Ellen Lewis. Is that my Ellen Lewis that I knew from childhood? No. I guess it could be. I run into childhood people. And they say, you're doing what? You were always so weird. Laura, how do we heal ourselves? It's a good question. First, I have the, the what do you want to heal and uh, what can you do to be with yourself? Number one, is we have to, well, you can't just take a pill and it's, you're healed. It's a mindset. It's a process. It's patience. It's looking into yourself. What do you need to be healed from? Where, is that, where does it come from? Where does that symptom come from? Is it tied into this current time? Is it tied into the past? Your childhood? So you're going to know all of these things. But you got to be honest with yourself, number one. That's the journey. Get out of self, serve others. Right. That's a good one. Get out of self, serve others. So that's another thing you do every day. Um, look at every person that you meet that day as God. How would you treat God? And they are, everyone you meet is a reflection to you. So if you don't like that person, there's something about yourself you don't like. If you love that person, it's something about yourself you love. So you know, you'll find people. It's good psychic exercise, too. And I'm not saying going to their energy field, not. I'm just saying, though, as you go to 
I'm looking really just who's going to Target or the store when I'm out. That's what I've been doing lately. And you just sense the person walking next to you what the energy is like. Are they odd? Are they a student? What level are they on? It's just, you're not getting their energy, but you feel their energy because right there next to them, what does it feel like to you? <clears throat> are they open to hearing you saying, hi, how are you today? You know, just that sort of thing. That's it. Do we help him? I have him. I hold him. That's right. Uh, the Writer's Workshop, Reichen, Awaken the Writer Within. And you get to that through my website, vampproc.com, or the school, JP School of Physical Arts. If never you've checked out the school, there it is right there. Please check it out because you'll see many, many things that are new and uh, can help you in many levels, different levels and situations in your life. Yes. Well, the uh, Julie's asking, will the Writer's Class offer guidance on channeling? Yes. A lot of people do channeling books. I talk to them a lot about that, how to, pr how to prepare that book. And what form it should take. A lot of people do channeling books. I always say start out to, but then I have sometimes a lot of them give you something very different and they thought I couldn't do this and they end up doing it. So it's a, it's a really great experience. It really is a good experience where you're, you're allowed to let your creative part come out and express itself. And so many of us who are uh, sensitive and empaths, we're never allowed to express ourselves or we were weird or funny or couldn't say things we wanted to say. This is a way of letting that voice out too, especially if you're blocked up in your. Uh, throat chakra, creative energy. Well, uh, Lisa McCullough, what's the best shield against negative and toxicity? I'm not to be around negative and toxicity people and keep your thoughts positive. That's what I would say. How can I get my nephew to stop his anger? You can't get him to stop his anger, Deborah. He's got to experience that. You can't control him. He can, you can't control him. And the best thing you'd probably do is not react to him and just walk away. And then he'll see it's not working. That's what you can do. And if that doesn't work, I'd bring him to a therapist and see if there's something going on. Okay. My mama, my, my girl is making her bed down here. My pet. Oh, there you go. Teresa Tomlinson. I have many pets. Is it okay to love and spend time with them? More than people? Uh, yeah, I do. Hi, James. I stuck on this limbo thing. I don't know what limbo thing is. I don't think it exists. Do you? No. No, that's just religion. Limbo does not exist, honey. There's limbo. We call it, there are many levels in the spirit world. There are many realms around us. There are worlds within worlds and worlds. But limbo is kind of me. I don't know. I forget what it was. I was raised Catholic. I think it's silly. Very silly. Can I show us your pet? Well, she's sleeping, right? She's making her bedding. I don't want to interrupt her because she'll be very upset. I could throw it down a little bit, though, if I could. The screen. I might mess it up. Ah, I mess it up. She's down there. If she gets up, I'll bring her up. Okay. Hi from Belgium. Wow. Hello there. Okay. Wow. This is fun. Have you been taking care of yourself, putting your mind in the right place, not feeling uh, negative, not feeling um, the result of anger or depression or stuff going on? Being Centered and grounded in yourself. Are you doing that? That really is important this time. Remember. Hi, James. My me thinks that cl clears that up because it does. Hi, James. My niece sees things in the dark in her in her. Good. Well, she should learn to meditate. Love you. Thank you, Fran. Love you so much. Thank you, Wendy Baker. Hi, sweetheart from Maine. Wow. So what book would you write if you're writing a book? A friend of mine who's going to take the class, actually, a scholarship for her because she's no money. I don't think. I am, she's going to write a book about God, which I think is interesting. Some people write about traveling, traveling at uh, uh, dream time. Some people talk about um, their animals. Some people talk about miracles in their life, a lot of different things. What would you write if you had a, if you were to write a book? Canley, putting your cat down today. So speak to your cat. Oh, uh, well, your cat knows, but you can always speak to your cat to get the, or hear your thoughts. So please, don't, don't please do that. I help them over. There's a presence around me. Do I know who? No, I don't. I really don't care. <laughs> I'm not working. I don't want to know who's around me. There's around us. Everyone has someone around them, but now I'm, I'm not working. They can leave me. Nancy, can I? Hi, Nancy. Teresa Summers, Trump or Biden? Oh, yeah. God. Teresa T Thomas, and you're so funny. I was where cradle Catholics funny. The nuns were strict, but I went down my own path. I like my spiritual. Way. I do too. And I got a. Um, oh, hold on a second. Read you something. Okay. 
Where do I have it? Oh, I don't have it. Oh, I don't have it. Where is it? I don't know what I did with it. I cleaned up my office. I don't know what I did with it. But um, this weekend I received, I was cleaning up, I don't know what I did with this letter, but I wrote to a, an old brother of mine. I, was in, I went to a seminary when I was 14. And I wrote to a, a really kind brother there, Brother Perez, such a sweet man, he took care of all the kids and uh, made sure, it was just a lovely soul from, I think he was from uh, Puerto Rico. And uh, uh, kind, and I left after 14, I left one year. And I was in touch with him a little bit here and there, but about three months ago, I had a feeling about him, it must be in his 80s or maybe he's passed over. I thought, I'm gonna write and see and just send him a little bit of a, a thank you for uh, helping to bring me up the right way to have values. And that's about Catholic necessarily, I'm talking about his, his manners and, and respect for people. That's what I got out of him. And I told him that, he said, I'm gonna thank you for helping me to help others. And, and he wrote me back a lovely, lovely letter. And uh, he, he really, he knew what I did, what I did his mediumship, and he, he's okay with that. That's from where he comes from, his land is, they do that, and he's, he knows who I am. So, I, you know, he knows it's real. But it was lovely to hear from him, he wrote me back. So he, you never know in life, Many years ago, as children, as young adults, that some may have an effect on you in a very positive way, and that effect will affect other people. So we'll just try to make things positive. What about people getting together and making a, uh, you can do that, uh, making a chapter together, or you should do a book with each person writing a chapter. That's a good thing, too. I think I'd prefer it that one. Kathy, soul time, spending time in quiet meditation, it definitely helps. Me, I find myself smiling more. Feeling good, Kathy. Kathy, and try everybody. Try to as you go outside, connect with life all around you. So connecting with the trees, connecting with the the flowers, the, the bushes. You know, now on the uh, on the east coast of the United States, it's fall, so the trees are colorful and falling. And just connect with the elements, the four elements. How do you feel with the you know the, the air, the, the heat, the sun, the, you know the the earth, the water, the air, the fire. What do you feel and and Send out lovely thoughts into the universe because there's so many negative thoughts. We want to counteract them with love and positivity. And we know everything's going to happen in divine order anyway. There's no way humans think they're in control. They're not in control. They just act out their, their karma. That's all they do. And they make good choices or bad choices. And they make good choices if they know who they are. They make bad choices if they don't take the time to know who they are. Just saying. How do you know who you are? Intuition, learning what your soul's language is by using intuition. You get that gut feeling about a person or about a thing or a situation or, or should move or get a new job. That's your intuition. Listen to that because that is your guide while you're here. And you'll never be wrong when you listen to your gut. Okay. See, these things just pop into my head. Thanks. That's probably who's around me. Someone might an inspirer who's giving me this information. I always have inspirers around me when I do soul care. Always. And when I do my evenings of spirit and evening of psychic readings, always have. My psychic readings are very interesting. When I do an evening of psychic, the guides I have are very different than the, the guides I have for mediumship. They're very different. So the next time we do uh, the psychic, which is going to be this Friday, I'm going to go through my guides and see who they are and share them with people. And I'll try to get your guides too on a night of psychic reading to try to get one guide for you, see if you recognize them. That'll be uh, a week from this Friday. Vicki, I want to let you know I participated in your spirit and meeting event, even though I didn't have a reading, but it made me feel so light and happy all over. I opened the first to you. Oh, thank you, Vicki. That's exactly what it's supposed to be. Thank you, sweetheart. And that'll change your life. It really will. Uh, when the time is right, it'll be open for a message. So that's that's great. I'm glad you got that. Trisha, with it. Any guidance for me today, please, James? Sure, Trisha. Um, you can close your eyes and write down three things you love about yourself. And then write three things you have to be patient about. There you go. But it's, it's unbelievable that Halloween is here. Halloween, yes, the veil of the spiritual world the levels are very close. But even now, because all these retrogrades, the veil is so close. So these readings are spectacular. I, I often feel, and I'm telling other mediums, just that I'm so much more in the spiritual realms than in the physical realms. I just, the whole concept of time is throwing me off here. And now the changing of the, uh, the seasons will be darker early it really is throwing me off so it's very interesting to watch it all it's amazing when you watch things and observe things instead of just feeling um things happen to you that's a very different mindset when you have things happen to you or you're aware of things happening two different things so again observe don't absorb it's very very good i'm only visiting here don't take so much about it she's just visiting it's just a place to come visit you're not going to stay here 
you gotta go back home eventually. But do the best you can while you're here in school. You don't have any regrets when you pass over, my friends. You do not, trust me. No regrets. So all those people you have to say, I'm sorry to, some people you wronged. You want to clear that up before you leave this earth. Trust me, you do. <laughs> James, will you let me do live readings with you? I don't know. Who are you? <laughs> I have no idea who you are. I am continue to open up to my gifts when we're doing the readings with you. And, well, you have to go into my mediumship classes, sweetheart. Let me see you doing. Um, this is a good question from Lori Crumbles Cone. What are some life lessons from losing loved ones to addiction? Hmm. Well, um, well, if you lost some addiction, look in your own life and see what your addictions are and how can you let go of those addictions and how can you love somebody unconditionally, maybe, who have addictions. Maybe you learn patience about them. Maybe you're unconditional love. Maybe you learn to let go of control. Maybe you, uh, maybe those are some of the questions, the lessons you're learning. Karen, love my meeting for two courses. Change the product. Awesome mentor. Thank you, Karen. Appreciate that. I'm working hard to open my third eye from Amy Artifetch. Okay. I okay. So, Amy, I've got some news for you. I'm wor working hard to open my third eye. I'm ringing my ears constantly, and I told I told her gifts, but not having success with my third eye. Any suggestions? Stop trying so hard. And what you can do is you can sit, I tell people sit in the closet, sit in the quiet, and just kind of pay attention to your breath, the inhalation and exhalation. And really what you want to do is just sit there and become aware of the space around you, in front of you, behind you, above you, below you, and become aware of how it changes. You ask your spirit guides to come around you and just sit and be mindful. And you have to start sitting in the silence, which means sitting in the quiet. Because once you start sitting in the quiet, you become very aware of how noisy the quiet actually is. So you'll, you'll, because you're working in a world which is kind of the other side, the unknown. And you have to delve into this unknown space before you're able to do reading. So that's a good thing to start. Sheila, what do you think? Your heavenly family does you. Do you think so? And Alicia, your daughter can speak to you more than she can speak to me. And she can hear your thoughts. But the more we try and get in touch with them, we block them. It's like a wall, but she's okay. Just know she's all right. Learning love. Yes, that's right, D. Learning love without expecting anything in return. Very true. It's a big lesson. I learned, learned this one. That one is life. What are you doing when someone not seeing you? I don't know what that means. Is hell or purgatory real? No, not in a religious sense. Um, it is in the sense that you create your heaven or hell based upon how you live your life in, on the earth. If you're mean to people, if you go over on people, if you try, if you're dishonest with people, you're going to find that all that meets you when you pass over, all of that. So that can be your heaven or your hell. If you live a good, decent life, love people as best you could, that'll be a nice life. If you went over on people, not, not do good things, you're arrogant, all about yourself, you have to run into that. It's going to take a while to get over that. Hi, Beth San Filippo. You are in the live feed. You have no idea what's going on. None of us have idea what's going on. Honey. I'm just answering questions that people want to ask. Just general questions, Beth. That's all. It's soul care. So I just answer questions and talk about spiritual things. Hi, Samantha. Okay. You got it. Now, sweetheart. Okay. Numbers. Michelle says about numbers. Yes. Numbers. 111-222-444. There's a synchronicity about numbers. And each number has a vibration. And when you see that same synchronistic uh, setup, a, a pattern of numbers, it definitely means something. You should look it up, what it means. Um, the only thing I know is Dorian Virtue's numerology numbers book was the best I could find. But you could find something probably that has better on the internet. I can't recommend it. I don't know any. So. Okay, Judy, Judy, Judy. Judy Cudney says, how do you answer questions from scientists who tell the other side that spirits are all illusions and hallucinations? Well, if that's their experience, you know, they don't have, they, well, I wish we would scientists would have the uh, tools to measure different dimensions, but they don't. So how can they say it doesn't exist? See, energy does exist, and they'll say that, um, as Einstein said. So it's just, it's not a black and white. It just isn't. Um, you've been chasing me for a while. That's great, Nika, chasing me. Lovely. I come from Germany. Oh, yeah, I've had a couple of chasers from Germany. 
and had to let my mother go. Does she want something to say to me? I'm, you have to listen to her. Thank you, Cindy. What does an advanced soul mean, says Alicia? How long? Well, in my understanding, an advanced soul is a soul that's been through many, many experiences of life, whether it's life here on this planet or life in other planets or star systems, because there are millions of them. So it's a soul that has had many, 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 many different experiences, and you can drop them somewhere, and they'll be like, they've done this before. So uh, a lot of souls that come here, that are at least around here, that are resonating to my work are usually older advanced souls because you wouldn't look into these philosophies of this uh, information if you didn't have that awareness. Jay, we all had past lives, all of us, every one of us. Do you need, do you read people introduced to you before? I don't know what this means. See, so when I do soul care, we get a lot of people who know nothing about me or the work. So that's why some people who have been with me many years, like, How can, don't they know this? No, they're brand new people. So we have to be open to everyone. Sarah Hughes. Hi, Sarah. Listen to the old interview with you and Oprah. She was skeptical of you. You handled it well. Thank you. She was nasty, very nasty, actually. She was skeptical, very nasty and disrespectful. And But she was shown she was shown stuff on that show, which I was blown away about. But, um, you know, it goes to her own belief system. I mean, if she took me now, she'd be much more considerate and respectful because she understands it now and, and knows how honest I am now. But at the time, you know, that was not to me. I thought that was not right to put that out in television when these people have had these experiences and it's hard to negate them. Not good. Barbara Walters did the same thing. Barbara Walters was very nasty to me. After many years of being a friend of mine, she totally um, threw me into the bus once, and that wasn't kind. I think people in media um, who have television shows and directors and producers, and I know this, I had one myself. I don't think there's a lot of people, I don't know, and that's one thing. I don't know if they know the responsibility that they have. Because it's a big responsibility, I don't think they get it. Like Barbara Walters and The View, and I think Whoopi gets it. I think sometimes people do get it. Um, I think Joy gets it to a point. But there's a responsibility that they have. I think Anderson Cooper definitely has it. There's a sense of responsibility. But so many hosts or producers don't get a sense of that responsibility to people, the people that are watching this, and do the best you can and be as objective as possible. Because there are many people who are open. So when I would got my broadcast degree, it was very important. And we had a study that um, you had to be as objective as possible, that there are both sides, and you have to be open to both sides. What well, should have been that way? It's unfortunate that when religion and politics mix, never should have happened. Uh, I was in the very first uh, fights with that, with Jerry Falwell and Norman, Norman Lear. I worked with Norman Lear trying to fight, fight the religious right because you don't want to mix politics and religion. Look what's going on now. It's just two different things. You can't do it. It's really sad. So, you got to think things in, in very um, the responsibility you have with other people. To me, it's mind blowing because you have people's lives in their hands. And what you put out in the universe, like programs you put out there, words you put out there, those are things. You hurt somebody, you hurt people, those are going to hurt you. Come back, slings and arrows. So true. If we just get that one awareness out there to the human race, that what you give out, you'll get back 10 times, 20 times, 30 times stronger. In this life or another, it'll meet you when you pass over. Don't you think everybody would be a little more mindful of how they behave? It's a golden rule. But yet we're not because our values are not there. You know, our values are money and, and, and buying things. You know, it's just consumerism. It's just can't last. I'm going to see now I'm talking again here. Hi, Lori Smith. How are you? I saw Brian yesterday. And he sends his love to you, sweetheart. Yes, that's karma. You keep the high road. I just finished a starship, um, James Starcy. And it's on the laws of the universe. That'll be coming out in a couple of weeks. Very good. I see that. Talk about manifestation. Okay, well, Judy, we'll manifest. So manifestation means that you will create anything you want in your life. You have the power within you and to create. So we have thoughts of things. And when you create, when you manifest something, you have to create a thought, uh, a thought with as much complexity, if you will, as possible. When you want something to manifest, you have to have the exact picture of what you want. And I'm talking down to you know, the time limit you want, the type of, uh, let's say you want a house, the type of house you want, the color you want, where you want it to be in location to the uh, the ocean, the, the, the woods, the mountain, what city is it? When do you want this? Can you look at the sun coming up? What side do you want the sun coming up in the morning? What kind of furniture do you have? What color is the furniture? Where is the couch located? Are there two rooms? You've got to be as much detailed as possible. And we send out those, we send out those thoughts. 
thoughts, those creative thoughts, a manifestation. And the more you can send it, the more you know, then that's easy for the universe to have that to you. These little, you know, when you give up these little skyrockets of thought, they are manifested at another level. But you have to be completely detailed about what you want. Some people say, I want love, I just want love. Well, they want love, and they find out that the man is an abuser. So they got the love, but he's an abuser. So you got to be very, very, very careful. My friend Carol once uh, manifested. She said, I'm manifested in Mercedes Benz. And she said, I'm manifesting at 12 20. I'm, I'm driving down Wilshire Boulevard. It's a brown Mercedes. It's a convertible, tan inside. There are so many miles on it. Okay. Um, I no, no payments on it. Great. And um, the sun is shining. So it's great. She has a certain music on the radio. She plays a certain song. Ten years later, she found herself driving down Wilshire Boulevard, 1220, with that song playing on the radio. And she had she was driving Mercedes, around Mercedes, same copper in, interior that she wanted. Everything was the same. But yeah, and, and she was 1220, and, and she had no payment, it wasn't her, but because it wasn't her car. She her, her vision came true, manifestation came exactly as she sent it. She didn't say it was her car, she just wanted a car. So she was actually driving her boss's car, picking it up from the, the mechanic to bring it back to the office. Gotta be very careful. Okay. Hugs, everyone. Yes, we can. We can be ourselves and send light to everything. So, if you haven't checked out the JP School of Mystical Arts, please do because there are 41 different courses that you can take all different times. And I'm going to be doing the writer's courses next thing coming up. And then I'm meeting next week with my people to create some of the courses. So let me know on my Facebook pages what courses you would like. We're going to be sending out a survey to everybody. So make sure your email list, your email on my email list at vampproject.com. Make sure you sign up on my email list. That's how the survey will get to you. So please take the survey because I'd like to know what to create in the future. And it's up to you how you would like things, even down to how often would you like me to do readings? Should I do, do um, two nights of spirit readings? Should I do private readings? How much will we charge? And all that sort of thing. What do you want me to teach? What kind of classes? All different ideas come from you, so I want to work with you. So please go on vampproj.com, put your email in there, and we'll send you a survey. Um, you can fill it out of what you want. Okay? Thank I really appreciate that. That helps me to help you. Mar Margaret Mickey Scarello, I believe you would be able to tell me if I could get my settlement things. Well, I believe you could probably figure it out for yourself. So it's hard. If you are psychic, everyone's psychic. So what do you think you will or no? Yes, Serena, I do have a course just for that. So I have a night of psychic readings, and that's next Friday. They get weekends Friday, and I do all psychic questions, like what's your next job, who's going to get the money, and who's going to whatever you have. And I work with Kelly White, who's also a very good medium and psychic, and she works with numbers of destiny, so she's very good. Um, so please look into that as well. Uh, yes, we walk around, angels walk around us for sure. Angels walk among us. It's very true. I love the title of that book. The funny thing is with, with work, with spiritual work, especially or psychic work, everybody wants somebody else to answer the question. Everybody wants, doesn't want to take responsibility to become aware and become enlightened. No one wants to take responsibility to be mindful of their own thoughts and how they treat people, of what they've done, what they haven't done in the past. No. Maybe things they've done in the past they're ashamed of or they regret and they don't want to face it. So, you know, I think we ask questions about, am I going to get this? Is this going to happen? I think it's, you should go back in yourself and say, am I going to get it? What is your soul telling you? Yes or no? What is your heart telling you? You have, you know yourself better than any psychic. So what is your heart telling you? Every single person is psychic, one degree or another. That's how we get through. So the more you put it out to somebody else to answer that, you're taking the power away from yourself. So it's like, go back to empowering yourself. Go back to breathing, slow, slow your, close your eyes and slowly go back to your breath. And as you go back to your breath, you inhale three, exhale five, inhale three, exhale five, and just ask that question to your soul. And you may get no, or it might be delayed or something. You might not get yes. So just ask yourself, don't get in your head so much that worrying about things. Worry does no good, it blocks energy, okay? Oh, thank you, Raquel Davis. You love my four-day course. Thank you, sweetheart. I'm also doing a course for Omega Institute it's coming up in November. So it's on Omega. You should go on Omega's uh, website to see that. It's a two-day course. 
Hello, hello, Rachel. Hello, Charlotte. Hello, Marlene. Why is it so hard, Marie Louise asked, why is it so hard to trust your intuition? Because you're not programmed that way. As a child, you're programmed to listen to your intuition, but then you became programmed by five or six years of age to listen to the adults and use your head to rationalize things. And we had to, um, we thought that the adults knew everything. So we followed their ways of doing things and we just gave away our power to the adults and we just started doing what we thought we had to to get love. And we took away, um, we were sort of programming, getting, getting programmed. And then we had to come back to our heart. We forgot what that was like. So it's really getting back to your heart and really getting away from what other people think of you. And you can't please people. You get to the point you can't please adults. You can't please your family. One person you can please is yourself. So it's getting back to your own self. It's bringing back your own power. This is from Rochelle Sidemeyer. Do you think some people are labeled crazy because they talk to the thin air or actually more advanced than those? But yes, I do. Exactly. Yes, I do. Yeah, I was at your wonderful weekend course in Seattle. Oh, it was a great course. And said, I blossomed with reader. Good girl. It's so fulfilling. What is your code of ethics? How, how have you internalized it in terms of how you live your life and do readings, you teach uh, hugs? Oh, I, I would treat others as I want to be treated. I, everything's in moderation. I, I do very low. Just beginning as a, a reader, should not charge that much. And that's really how you start. And treat others with love and respect. Yeah, Sherry, if you want to go on the website and have a read by a psychic, you can. Uh, there are people back in the uh, resource page that can do that. You can't do that now. Jennifer Miller, hmm. when depression is so extreme, it, it can lead, not always lead to suicide. How do our loved ones cross over? Well, there are many on this side of life who bring them over, especially those who've had those experiences of depression and know what they're dealing with. So no one passes alone, and they always deal with someone that you're, you're met by someone who can help you immediately. And most of the time, people don't realize they're out of the body. So someone says, you passed. That's how easy it is. So don't worry about the suicides. It feels like a book of revelations is happening. It's true, right? Transform Odi Locus. Transformation. It's all transformation right now. And it's the time where the love and the light have to pop up. And we uh, illuminate the darkness. The first to go see the darkness before you see the light. So you have chaos before you have order. That's what we're going through right now. But don't you lose who you are in your life. Don't get angry. Don't judge people. Not good to judge. We only judge other people when we feel um, insecure. We judge others because we want to feel better than we don't love ourselves. Is there much work to do when we cross over or is information first? Julie, you got to look at your life that you've just lived and see how you lived your life. Did you learn your lessons? Did you use love? Did you not use love? So that's really what's going on. I'm a Capricorn. How do I get out of my head? Oh, I was told that was a, a giraffe head in the clouds. Oh, just go to your heart. So when you breathe in, when you breathe in, take the breath in all the way to your feet and pay attention to the bottom of your feet. That's all. You're a Capricorn. Groundedness. Stay in your ground. Get to your heart, not your head. What do you feel about things? Not thinking. What do you feel? Change think to feel. All right. That'll help. Capricorn. I know Capricorns. Well, I'm going to say to everybody, I, I love to look forward to working with everybody. If you're going to join my writer's course, please do so. Uh, uh, Wake of the Writer Within. And uh, you'll be seeing notice very soon. But make sure also you put your email address on my vampire.com to uh, answer the survey to help me with the survey. I appreciate that. And I'll see you next Monday, if not before. Okay. Thank you, everybody. Have a good day.